and this is my review for Transformers Dark of the Moon Cyberverse Commander Guzzle. I had originally planned to skip out on the Cyberverse line entirely. Uh, there really wasn't anything that looked that interesting to me uh, in the line, except for the uh, Dark of the Moon Cyberverse Commander Hatchet. Um, I might still pick him up, uh, but I really don't like the fact that he uh, he doesn't turn into an SUV like he did in the movie, but we'll see. Uh, but anyway, I did see pictures of this guy, and I really, really was uh, impressed by him. I thought he looked really, really nice. Um, and I thought, what the heck, I'll just pick him up. Uh, and later I actually found out that Guzzle is a member of the IDW Wrecker Team, and as I've shown off in my collection video, I have been building my own, uh, impromptu Wrecker Team on my Season 2 shelf. Uh, so, I figured I would pick up this guy because he was a member of the original Wreckers. Um, and he did look pretty cool. Uh, so, that's why I ended up picking him up. And I can say, he is a really, really nice little figure. Um, especially for being so small. Um, he's... Kind of between a scout and a legend size. He's not quite a scout and he's not quite legend size either, but for being this small, uh, he is a really, really nice little figure. And I will say that right off the bat. Anyway, as you can see, uh, he's a tank. Uh, I'm not sure it, what kind of tank he's based off of. He's clearly not based off the tank that he transformed to, into in the original G1 toy line, uh, because that was a mini-bot tank, and it was very chibi-esque, uh, very, very uh, awkwardly proportioned. Uh, but it is based off a real tank, and it does look pretty nice. It might be an M1 Abram. Um, I'm not really sure, but anyway. Still really, really cool looking. I really like the look of this tank. It does have very, very nice detailing, too. Um, as you can see, uh, it's got some really nice rivet designs all throughout it. It's got very, very nicely detailed tank treads. Um, it's also got, uh, you can kind of see um, on the side, it does have a little symbol right here, kind of these bars like bars uh, that look very military-esque. And it does have C313 uh, written on the side, um, as you can kind of see. Um, I'm not really sure what that stands for, but if anybody knows, please let me know. Um, it also does have a Delta symbol right here. Um, I'm not really sure what that's for, but it still looks pretty cool. Uh, not a whole lot to say about in terms of features. Uh, he does roll, kind of. He does have very, very small wheels on the back, or uh, on the bottom, rather. Uh, obviously, the treads don't work just due to the size, but he really just glides along on surfaces rather than rolls along them, which is a bit of a shame, but that's kind of to be expected with such a small figure. Uh, very rarely do us figures this small actually roll fairly well. Um, he does also does have these guns. Uh, right here, uh, which you can remove if you like. I mean, he looks cool without them on, but personally, I prefer the look of them on the tank. And you can uh, you can switch them out uh, to do whatever you want. You can have uh, one gun on this side and one gun on the other. Uh, you can not switch them up and have them reversed, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I like the interchangeability, and I thought it was a nice feature that they added. Uh, for transformation, um, it's very, very simple, as you would expect for such a small figure. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and pull off the guns, and um, we'll get back to those later. Uh, then you want to flip this piece up, like so. Take these pieces on the back, um, flip them down. These will form his legs. Uh, split them. Uh, then untab this piece, like so. And the second verse is the same as the first. Uh, to steal one from him, go. Uh, get his legs like that. Uh, flip down his feet, like so. Uh, then you want to go up to the top of the tank. Um, you want to split it, like so. Fold these pieces down. Uh, go right here. Take this panel, flip it up. Like so. I then straighten out his arms. Like so. Now with this turret piece, and this is kind of funny, uh, the instructions and some of the promotional shots uh, say to take the turret, um, it's on this rotational hinge, um, and they say to take it and rotate it so that it faces like this. Which, <laughs> oh, I hate this, I hate this, I'm trying to be clean, but anyway, uh, I obviously, I obviously don't do that, <laughs> since, yeah, for one reason it looks awkward, and in the original G1 figure, um, and pretty much every representation of Guzzle that's been since, uh, he does have the turret, uh, sticking up out of his back, uh, rather than pointing down, so... My apologies for that, but I just thought that was funny. Anyway, um, I do kind of wish that they had uh, put a pin joint in it so that it could actually slide down, uh, like a slider joint, so that the uh, turret could actually collapse down into his back a little bit more. Um, I'm okay with it as it is, but still, I think it would have been nice if they had managed to uh, find a way to push it down a little bit more, but oh, what are you going to do? Um, then with his guns, uh, what you can do uh, is you can take the guns, um, and you can flip this piece down, and then you can take the uh, gun right here and you can plug it in on top. There's a little hole in a post um, on this gun, and you can plug them into the top to give him this pistol with a scope type thing. 
Uh, personally, I don't do that because I don't really like the look of it that much, and I personally think Guzzle should have two guns anyway. Uh, but you can do that if you want. Uh, nothing's stopping you, but this is just the way I like to do it. Um, I also would be careful with this piece. Um, it does fit into his hands uh, somewhat securely, but it does feel like it could be uh, rocked loose and you could lose it um, if you... Play if you uh, handled it too roughly, so do be careful with this gun. Uh, this gun uh, fits in very snugly, uh, but with this gun, you might want to be a little bit careful, or you might lose it. But anyway, uh, there you have Guzzle in robot mode, and very very cool looking. Um, I really like the look of this guy. Um, it's very very neat. Um, I like how it combines the G1 aesthetic and yet makes it more movie fied, and yet it's classics enough uh, to actually look pretty good in a classics collection. I really like the look of this guy. I think it's really nice. Um, he does have a very nice head sculpt, um, as you can see. Um, really, really cool looking. Um, I like the look of it. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of detailing on his face, and what detail he does have is very, very alien. Well, let's see if I can focus in on it. Um, you can kind of see, um, it is a very, very alien-looking face, uh, which is kind of cool. And I love the bright blue paint that they used on it. Uh, the G1 Guzzle figure had paint that was a very similar uh, shade of blue on his face, and I think it looks really, really nice that they actually kept that in there. Um, I thought it was a nice homage. Um, I know a lot of people are complaining about the yellow plastic, or yellow paint, rather, uh, that they used on his chest. And I agree, it is a little bit too vibrant for me. It's not quite as vibrant as the camera's making it out to be. Uh, but it is still a very vibrant yellow. I wish that they had gone with maybe a darker yellow. Uh, not a very dark shade of yellow, uh, but still, I think it would have been nice if they had used a yellow that was not quite as neon, but still, it looks pretty nice. Um, I also do really like the tan color that they used on his hands, or uh, not hands, head. Where's my brain today? Um, and on his legs, but anyway, really, really cool. Uh, for articulation, um, it is a little bit limited just due to the, scale, the uh, size of the figure. Um, he does have... Um, he has no head articulation, uh, which is a bit of a shame. I mean, I can't tell if it's just the way that the sculpt is, or if there's actually just no joint in it at all, because it feels like it should move, uh, but it just doesn't, uh, so I'm not really sure. But that's a bit of a shame that he can't rotate his head, but oh well, I kind of expected it on a figure this small. Um, he does have ball-jointed shoulders, um, which are very nice, so you can rock them back and forth. You can also, if you want, use this transformation joint. Uh, to hunch up his shoulders, if you like, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, he does have a joint right here, just due to transformation. Um, it looks a little bit awkward when you're posing it, but it still is there for your use. Um, it does also have ball-jointed hips, or, uh, ball-jointed hips, ball-jointed elbows. Sorry, I'm pretty tired today. Uh, but he does have ball-jointed elbows, which, again, are a little on the awkward side. Uh, you can pose them, but they do look a little bit weird. I mean, most of that is just due to the length of his arms uh, rather than the actual joint, but, oh, well, they still are there, and you still can use them. Uh, he does have ball-jointed hips, uh, which are nice. Uh, they go back and forth. Uh, they also go in and out, but there's really not much you can do with them since due to the sculpt, they really only go straight out, but, oh, well, they still are there. I mean, he does have knees, uh, which are nice. Uh, they're a little bit limited, uh, uh, just due to the way that his feet are designed, uh, you really can't bend his f uh, knee back without him falling over, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Uh, his feet also do go up and down, but again, they're completely flat, so you kind of have to keep him in a flat-footed stance uh, to get him to stand properly. Uh, so, he's a little bit art limited in articulation, but that's okay, since I pretty much just have him posed like this on my shelf, uh, so I really wasn't too bummed out by the fact that he does have limited articulation. Anyway, uh, for some size comparisons, uh, first off, here he is next to Revenge of the Fallen Bumblebee. So you can see, like I said, uh, he's in between a Scout and a Legends figure. Uh, not quite Scout and not quite Legends, which, it's a nice scale. Um, I do like it. I think it's a perfect scale for Guzzle, really. Um, and also, just for fun, uh, here he is uh, next to a couple, a couple members of my impromptu record team. I'm not going to bring all of them out, but here are just a couple of them. Uh, here he is next to uh, Target exclusive Roadbuster, uh, which looks pretty cool. Um, I like the look of them together. I usually display them close to one another. Uh, here he is next to uh, Cup, uh, since Cup was on the IDW record team. Uh, here he is next to the leader of the records, uh, Springer, uh, which looks pretty nice. Let's see if I can get them all in a group shot together. There we go. And also, finally, uh, just for fun, here he is next to uh, Reveal the Shield Perceptor. Um, so, pretty nice looking team there. Um, I really do like it. Um, I do hope that we get an Impactor figure. Um, an official Impactor figure. The Iron Gear Impactor does look pretty cool if they ever get back to work on it, but I would like to have an official Impactor figure. Although he is such an obscure character that I doubt we'll ever get one. But anyway, 
So overall, yeah, a really, really nice little figure. Um, like I said, uh, Cyberverse really isn't my thing, uh, but I do really highly recommend this guy. I think he looks really, really nice in a Classics collection. Um, and he looks really good as a Wrecker, too. Uh, so if you are building a Wrecker team, uh, this guy definitely will look nice in your Wrecker team. So there you go, my look at Transformers Dark of the Moon Cyberverse Commander Guzzle. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.